Greetings, fellow nerds. Welcome to another MTG Nerdful video. We are doing some Strixhaven standard. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope you're starting off your week right. Um, at this point, I am actually going to be, I believe I'll start streaming at least this week or next week by the time you see this video. So it'll be in the description. So if you want to see me uh, go live with some crazy wacky stuff, I'll be playing other games besides uh, NTG. Please feel free to support me on Twitch as well. Mostly be going live from 7 to 11 PST time, usually after work and uh, after a workout most likely i know the gyms aren't open in my area but i will be working out uh so hopefully it'll be a little bit slimmer anyways um please hit those buttons down below it really helps me out subscribe like comment uh you know hit that notification bell um and so you can participate in fan submission fridays where you simply drop an aether hub link or copy and paste an entire deck list in the comments down below and say hey i want you to play this it can be any format whatever it is you want me to try out um and yeah i've had a lot of fun so far i'm excited to see what you guys are cooking up i get a lot of ideas from you guys too so um yeah i'd love to see what you guys are cooking up for me um so again please 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 submit anything if you want your deck featured for this friday all right so uh question of the day um you know what is kind of a deck that you've always enjoyed playing um you know throughout um the meta shifting the standard ship the standard rotation and all that stuff for me um silver quill clerics i'm gonna start using the new term because i just like it. it sounds so fancy uh the silver quill clerics have been pretty solid i've enjoyed playing them um and yeah i just they, they've been my favorite so far honestly they've been my favorite tribal so i want to know what kind of your favorite decks um have been um despite rotation so gives me ideas too so uh, again, we are looking at Silver Quill Clerics or Orzhov Clerics, and um, this deck got a lot of nice buffs, um, and I've made some significant changes, actually, but the deck plays the same uh, for the most part. The idea is to, um, you know, smash smash face, you know, make the opponent's life a little bit more miserable with your non-creature spells, and um, sub-theme of a life, uh, life gain, so pretty cool. Uh, we got some new additions, so let me show you what we are working with. So we got two Archfiend's Vessel. I realize there's not a lot of recursion in this deck, so I don't actually need to um, put in too many Archfiend's Vessel, but we do have Aghanim's Awakening, so it's still worth it for a two drop. Helps with Aura as well, um, which we are playing. I decided, decided this over Speaker of the Heavens um, just because um, Archfiend's Vessel, I think people will kind of keep around for a little bit longer. And he can be a good chomp blocker in that instance. Um, and we're not always getting to 27 life, um, even though there is a sub life uh, gain uh, theme in this deck. Luminar Gasparant, really great card. Uh, it's going to be around forever, I think, in standard. It's just powerful effect. So definitely four of those. To Rally the Ranks, um, we already have um, an Anthem effect with Righteous Valkyrie. But um, I did want um, some ways just in case we weren't getting there. So to Rally the Ranks here. Um, I do have one of the Deans, of the Silver Gold Deans. So we have um, Shale and Ambrose. Um, Shale's, we're mostly going to be using Shale's because he's our Cleric. Um, only a one of because he's really, really um, susceptible to removal. I just didn't want him to get removed all the time. So he's a good one of. Um, but uh, Ambrose can come in pretty handy too. Um, because um, if our creatures are bigger than uh, two toughness, then we get to, um, you know, make them bigger and um also uh plus one plus one counters are important because it pairs off nicely with luminar gasmart so his secondary effect actually could come in pretty helpful three heartless x for the removal four Karak of life bond still a great card um very i know it's chump blockable but um very hard to answer when he gets out of control Dire tactics for great removal silver cool silencer is a great addition to the cleric stack um mainly for the most part you can you know what the opponent's playing once you see the first couple of cards so you can name a card and they'll most likely put a removal on here but three two for two always good vanishing light for removal um elite spellbinder um so i was kind of wary about putting this because of its one toughness but it's such a good card because it just slows down the opponent i didn't realize that even if the spellbinder dies that they still have to pay the two so it's just a really strong way to slow down your opponent so three of that and it's a flyer which is great Four Retro's Valkyries, of course. Um, playing one selfless Glyph Weaver. Um, the, the the other side is great, but probably won't be playing that too much. But um, kind of a way, I you know me, I love playing Heroic Intervention. So great way to kind of put that in this non-green deck uh, with a selfless Glyph Weaver. Uh, Aura, of course, for Recursion. Um, trying to 
um, you know, get some things back, especially from a board wipe. And I'm playing one Professor Onyx. We're playing a lot of instances, so, um, and, you know, I'm a sucker for Liliana. I've always uh, enjoyed Liliana Planeswalkers, uh, so I got it. I had room, so, you know, I, I put I put her in. What can I say? Um, then we got two Mirrors Call, three Academies Awakening, two Castle Arnavales, five Planes, two Castle Long Queens, five Swamps, and four Pathways for our lands. So overall, um, pretty solid. Um, so again, if you want to see, so Mondays, um, for the most part, uh, by the time you see this video, hopefully it won't be too late. Uh, but I'll most likely be drafting. I love limited. I haven't gotten to play and now I'm going to get a little bit kick, uh, by going live and, um, also just doing some more deck building. It'd be a great time to interact with you guys and say, and ask for help, like saying like, Hey, what cards do you think I should put in? Or, um, what do you guys think? Or also a great way to get your fan decks in for Friday. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. Honestly, I'm a little nervous. I've only gone live a couple times on youtube mostly for among us playing with friends so this will be the first time kind of going solo um so i'm pretty nervous but um yeah hope to see you guys there okay so a little worried um i i always keep two land hands for the most part because if we curve out properly it, i've not played a mutate deck in a long time so okay so it worked out we um our greed is going to get rewarded um because we only need really three mana to function this deck um, is this mono green mutate? I'm not sure what I'm seeing. This is interesting. Okay. It makes me a little nervous, not gonna lie, but we're gonna slam down our Valkyrie. And get in there for three. Um, I hope he's not gonna recur. I have not seen a Wither Bloom or Golgari, uh, reanimate deck with, uh, Big creatures cycling in a long time. It looks to be mono green though, so I'm curious to see where this is going. Okay. Um, so this is actually a great time to either Banishing Light or um, Exile, because you get both creatures, which is pretty solid. So it is black, so I'm super nervous actually. So I'm actually, um, I'll go ahead and take the four. I'm actually super nervous here. Drew a planes, which is nice. I'm actually gonna just go ahead and banishing light here. Just I don't wanna give them a free mutate with um gem razor um either. Uh and we still have access to dire tactics, which is great. So which is an instant. So if we draw a land, we can play the spell binder and hold up the dire tactics, which would be fantastic. So this is a reanimate deck with big creatures. I have not seen this in a very long time. Ooh, six mana. That seems like a... Oh, okay, I thought that was going to be a um, Warren Clips, but... Okay. Yep. Interesting that they would mutate after? I think you're supposed to mut mutate first and then play the land. Okay, yep, so didn't draw on the land, but it actually worked out pretty well here. Okay, they still do have a screw storm, but it's not the end of the world. They're kind of running low on cards. Um, I'm not really sure what to name here. I guess I could name a scoot, scoot, scoot swarm. It's probably a safe one. Just because that's kind of like a good chunk of how the deck like pops off. So I actually should have played that first because I could have gotten in for an extra point of damage. So that was a bit of a mistake actually. Um, oh, another six. Yeah, this can't be good. I think there's going to be another mutate with... Um... Oh, and it has reach. No, that's the worst. Uh. Okay. Yeah, this is this is getting tough. Yeah, luckily it only makes a 2-3. It doesn't make a 4-5. So that's a little comforting, but uh, not great by any means. Yeah, this is still not good. Okay. Yikes. Yeah, this is going to be tough. It's going to be a tough battle. Um... I'm not really sure what to do here, if I'm frankly honest. But I suppose the right thing to do is to play the Spellbinder, see what he's got in his hand. 
It's just a forest. Okay. Well, that's well, that's so. Here's the problem here. Um, uh, blands are bad because it just swarms the field. So we might actually lose here. Uh, wow. You know, if they were not playing the uh, reach guy, uh, we probably would have won just in the air alone. Um, but unfortunately, that is not the case. So. Oh, yeah, and they're going to get a 6-6 six, six every time. Okay, so I'm actually going to give this up to them. So um, even with all our removal spells... Um, <laughs> that's cool. He used the Zendikar quote. Um, so even with um, all the removal spells, we're not able to kind of stop all the mutate. Um, honestly, it was probably the reach that stopped this because um, we could have attacked and then we attack it again in the air. So I think we would have had a shot potentially, but... Um, yeah, he's playing the reach mutate like I Think mutate decks are interesting because they're so susceptible to removal so like board wipes and I don't usually play board wipes Because uh, I'm not playing um, control for the most part. I'm not really a control player. I'm just it's just not how I play magic, but All right, so we lost to uh, mutate there, um, which is like pretty rare to be quite honest. I they, you don't see them that often, so you can get caught off guard. But good on the opponent, honestly. So we're playing against Esper. Um, I'm just going to try and go as quickly as possible. Um, and I do want to probably play the Luminarch Aspirant um, out of all things. Uh, that was decent. I don't think I'm any time close to this, so... I'm probably going to get countered here, um, which is fine. Um, you have to run into the counter spells and try to remove them. Get your opponent to use them as quickly as possible because you don't want them removing your really good stuff. All right, so he's probably got another counter spell, and that's super important. So it's kind of a matter of, like, what do I want removed? Goes for the Blood Chief's Thirst. That's fine. Um... That was going to get rid of the Cleric no matter what. Um, so I'm going to just try and take a peek at his hand here. Try to slow him down just a tad bit. And his effect goes off either way because of... Um, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, oof. Uh, I'm not worried about instants and sorceries, so... I will be elsewhere. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play... Uh, well... I could get up to triple black. So maybe not quite yet. So he has to play seven. And I'm not playing too many instances and sorceries. And it's dire tactics too. So it's not like it's going to be super... Um, it's not going to be like super um, useful by any means anytime soon. So... That's fine. Okay. So, Agadim's Awakening is now active, which is great. I can't attack here, unfortunately, because of the... Um... Oh, actually, I could. Um, so, that actually ends up working pretty well. Because I can get back the Luminarc Aspirant here, which is pretty nice. And... You don't think he has enough mana, so... Yep. Okay, so... Uh, Agonim's Awakening for 3 is huge. I might wait till 4. Um, just to... Um, get Aura back, which, is, which would be huge. So... Um, he only has black mana, which is great. Blood Chief's Thirst comes in, and I don't have a one mana, sadly, so that is a bit painful, but not the worst. Okay, I do have four, but I have to, I think I actually have to play this while he's tapped out. Um, might be a bit greedy, but I think it is the right play, nonetheless. Not okay. I'm gonna put it on the aura. Just be as aggressive as soon as I can. And I get the anthem effect. So that actually worked out great. That was totally, totally planned. 
Um, and by totally planned, I mean not at all, because I don't do math. I am an English major with a law degree. And by the way, I just finished law school, so comment down below if you want to congratulate me. Uh, that's a great card as well. Probably... Oh, he actually... Yeah, I actually don't have to worry about anything. Um... Woo! Okay, we beat Esper Control. Yeah, those that card is super interesting. Um, it's I feel like like countering instant sorceries, like it's good in like a mirror control mirror matchup, but it's not good against like my deck in particular, because I was just going lots of dire tactics and I'm like, I'm not gonna use this anytime soon. Unless you play the uh Yorian, which like and then I then you get rid of cards for me that I was probably never going to use anyway anytime soon, so yeah, it's a it's more of a sideboard card, I would say. In a best of one, I don't think you should be putting that, but... Alright, let's get in for... Ooh, okay, I like this hand. Um, there are clear turn one, turn two, turn threes, which is always fantastic. We are not going first, which is a bit of a bummer, but we do have a turn one play, which is nice, so it kind of makes up for it, right? We're playing against Control, the blue mana. Drew a land, like that. I like drawing lands. Not just, just not too many lanes, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Looks like it's a straight up mono. Ooh. I might have to play the Dean here just because he's our one of. You got to flex a little bit, right? Probably going to be my thumbnail. <laughs> it has to be, right? I mean, he's cool. He's cool. Okay, we're playing against the mill deck. This will be super interesting. Um... It might actually end up helping us because we have Agandim's Awakening and we have an Aura. So it might really end up being in our favor more than anything. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and... Yep, set this for white. Tempting to set it for black, but um, we're mostly white heavy. I'm actually going to go ahead and play the Luminar Gas Burns. Uh, the counter... I don't think it really matters. I guess I'll put it on this guy, actually. And I get to activate his ability. So we got a counter. That worked out really great. Okay. Oh, those are two cards I would have actually liked this. Uh, Silencer would have been actually really solid against um, Mono Blue uh, Mill because um, there are clear cards that that deck is playing. Um, probably would have named um, the Manny and Cacophony, another Teferi's Tutelage. A rune crab, um, lots of cards you can definitely name. Um, okay. okay, so I got a three drop in there. So if I can draw an aura, or not an aura, actually, I don't actually want to draw an aura because they're not um, really destroying my cards. Um, I need a Academy's Awakening. No, <laughs> no, give it back. Uh, okay, I mean, this is good news, honestly, because. Um, we're on the offensive, which um, is better for us. So I'm just going to actually um, hold up for Dire Tactics because I don't mind the win Robber, but um, I do. I probably do want the Dire Tactics at some point, right? So I'm just going to... Um, he'll take uh, six damage regardless, so... Um, no creatures coming in, but holding up dire tactics could be important here. So he blocks whatever, draws a card out of it, which is fine. Milled for two. Uh, oh, he probably has into the story at this point. Huh? Okay, I, I do have to start kind of. Oh man, I maybe I should have played the. No, I lost another Agadim's Awakening. Okay, there is a Rune Crab. I'm actually going to go ahead and, okay, before I get milled for six, though, I'm going to go ahead and go for Dire Tactics. Oh, I do get milled for six? Oh, because he can do it in response. Oh, that's so annoying. Lost the aura. That's fine. I actually do want an Elite Spellbinder because um, that slows down their deck considerably, so I may have lost my window there. Um... And I do have a human, so, I mean, life wasn't really... Oh my gosh, seriously? What? He had the perfect answers. 
Okay, but he's tapped out. He's tapped out. That's actually super important. Oh, Professor Onyx, not super helpful right now. Okay. So I'm actually going to go put it on the Dean because it's in the air. And if he chump blocks... So he actually has to block. He actually has to chump block. Um, which is great news. Okay, I'm going to play a creature. I don't think selfless skill if we... So we got both our one ups here, which is super interesting, but... We just have to not get milled out this turn, and we win. Whew. Wait, that was actually nerve wracking though. Um, whew. Whew, that was that was actually a little bit nerve wracking. Not going to lie, I was pretty nervous there. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end it there. Actually, I feel like that was um, kind of a good take on it. Ooh, we got Jodzi. I like that. I like that. I might play a deck around uh, her in Simic. Um, she's pretty cool. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Again, this has been one of my favorite tribal decks when it first uh, hit standard. So I'm really glad to see it doing pretty well for the most part. Um, so yeah, again, fan submission Fridays, you know what to do. Just drop an Aether Hub link, copy and paste your entire deck list. Follow me on Twitch. Um, hopefully I'll put it in the description. If it's not up by this week, it will be definitely be up by next week. So uh, finally free to live stream. So I'm really excited for that. So Thank you all so much for your support during this time. It's been crazy. We're on the road to 300 subscribers. Um, would really love to see your support. Um, continue watching my videos and all that. So right now up top, YouTube is showing a video of my most recent upload. And then right below that is a video that YouTube thinks you specifically like. Probably a deck you haven't seen me play yet. So go ahead, check those out. I do upload Monday through Thursday and Friday if there's a fan submission video. And I'll be going live once again. So thank you all so much for your support. It's been super meaningful during this time. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you for your next Nerd Film.